Welcome back! I'm Tyler, you're watching I'm Telling Tyler, our write-in show where you can ask me questions, tell me the latest tea, and so long as it's at least Lolita adjacent, you can send your queries and or tea to imtellingtyler at gmail.com. Before we get to our first submission of the evening, I'm going to give you a heads up that I will be using a euphemism for a couple of terms. This is mostly because I don't want my channel yeeted off YouTube or this video to be demonetized. So, the word I'm going to use is explicit hugging. I'm going to be using these words to cover a term that rhymes with mechsmirker, a person who has mechs or does mechs on camera for the monies. Do you follow my drifts? So one more time, explicit hugging or explicit hug worker is what I'm going with. All right, YouTube's very sensitive about these things, but we both know what I'm talking about now. So let's get to our first submission. And that first submission comes today from Cupcake. And Cupcake says, As you can tell by the title, there is an explicit hug worker in my cob. And while I won't judge someone for explicitly hugging, I will judge them for advertising their explicit hug work in safer work places filled with minors. Which is exactly what the explicit hug worker in question was doing. She'll post insanely revealing pictures of her in her skimpy undergarments with captions like, Venmo me $10 and I'll send you something special, I can only assume that she's hinting at explicit hugs. And she'll use safer work tags such as Lolita Fashion, Harjuku Fashion, and Decora Fashion, all of which are safer work places filled with minors. Now here's the worst part. My friend and I can't do anything about it. We both asked her to stop using safer work tags in the nicest way possible, but then her army of fans, more like simps, come after us saying bullshit like, if you don't like it, don't look at it. You're too young to look at this stuff anyway. She's just trying to make a living. There's no need to judge. And it's just a body. You're overreacting. It doesn't help that she has a significantly larger following than us, so we get drowned out. We've also talked to Instagram over this, but they aren't doing anything about it. What should we do? My friend and I have tried everything that we could do, but nothing seems to work. Please give us advice as to what we should do. Sincerely, Cupcake. Right out the gate, I'm just gonna say I am frustrated with you. If you've already talked to Instagram and you've already tried to reach this explicit hug worker, and had her fans like freak the frack out on you. I hate to tell you this and it, it really bothers me too, but I don't think there's much you can actually do other than tap the don't show for this hashtag button in force. Instagram is fracked up for many different reasons. This is definitely one of them, but insofar as what an individual can do when an explicit hug worker is clowning on Instagram and safe for work tags. There's not much we can do about this other than make it really clear just how wrong it is and continue to champion that cause within the community. I do want to pause and say that I'm sure neither Cupcake nor I have any issues with explicit hug workers. My and Cupcake's issue is very obviously and very firmly in the realm of when these people go into safe for work tags and sell explicit hugs. You know what I'm talking about. That's just not okay. There, there is a level of professionalism and consent if you want to be considered an actual profession, which explicit hug workers do. Like any other real job, that comes with a sense of professionalism and it comes with a sense of responsibility. And I do see a lot of explicit hug workers ducking that and thinking that they can violate people's consent by putting their explicit hugs in safe for work spaces. And that's not okay. No part of that is okay. And it makes me incredibly uncomfortable because back when I was doing research for a related topic on BDLG, and I was doing episodes covering how they were violating the consent of the Lolita community, stealing pictures, co-opting our spaces, and just clowning in general, all right? They also would post in safe for work tags. And this was on Tumblr and on Instagram, but they would, they would post things like in the princess tag and the minimum age to get on Tumblr was like 13. So 13 year olds could be looking at Disney princesses and suddenly see a fracking butt plug. I'm not even kidding. I saw things that shouldn't have is what I'm saying. And it horrifies and upsets me that a profession that wants to be taken seriously as work, as real work, seem to think that at the same time that those standards that come with being taken seriously as a career path don't apply to them. 
they think that they can just run roughshod all over consent and all over safer work communities, and that's not okay. Safer work spaces are safer work for a reason, all right? You have minors up in there. You have asexuals up in there. You have people who don't want to be subjected to your derriere, sans underwear, up in there. It's just basic common sense, basic common decency, and I'm so sorry, Cupcake, that you're having to see this nonsense, because that pisses me off too. Like, that's just gross. That's unprofessional. That person should obviously take a long, hard look in the mirror and consider the feelings of others when they're doing shit like this. Because it is so fracking easy to keep your explicit hugs in explicit hug spaces. There are a frack ton of them. You do not need to be invading the safe for work tags to show off your thingamajigs and your who's a what's it's is what I'm trying to say. All right, we're trying not to get demonetized up in here. There are so many other words I could be using, but we're going with thingamajigs and who's a what's it's. Especially because Lolita fashion at its core separates sexuality from femininity. I just did a fracking episode mentioning that. It's not hard, and it is a real violation of the core elements of this fashion and the community who struggle so hard not to be sexualized. To be selling your fracking explicit hugs in the middle of a safer work tag about a fashion that is desperately trying to separate itself from explicit hug workers. And if you're an actual professional, you should fracking know better. So, Cupcake, I'm sorry that wasn't a particularly funny response, and I'm sorry I don't have much for you, I really do hope you and your friends can continue to just jackhammer the do not show for this tag. I wouldn't wade back into their fracking comment section again because a lot of these people do have like rabid straight male simps. They're all sharing one brain cell and you're just, you're not gonna make any progress with them, all right? And if it's really impacting your mental health, I recommend you and your friends just block them. If you, if you aren't satisfied with don't show for this hashtag, just just block their ass so you never have to see it again. Unclad or otherwise. So let's move on to our second submission. Thank you, Cupcake. And our second submission comes from Cotton Ball. And Cotton Ball says, Hi, Tyler. I really love the fashion and would love to wear it. At this point, it feels more like a need but I have some obstacles. One, my husband handles all our money and I feel bad asking to spend any since I'm a stay-at-home mom. Two, I've tried doing a very casual look that couldn't even really be considered Lolita since I don't have proper Lolita attire. It was just a blouse and a non-Lolita dress with makeup. And he told me I looked like I was wearing a costume. This has me worried because if he says this about a casual look, then what would he say about actual Lolita? 2.5, also his comments about that outfit made me have doubts about that outfit, and so I changed. My body image issues make it take forever to get dressed, and usually when I'm satisfied and done getting dressed, I'll ask if I look okay. And if he is passe or says no, it hits me hard and makes me doubt what I'm wearing. Three, I've shown him pictures of cohorts and he told me he considers them costumes. No one dresses like that all the time and people that dress like that are sick in the head. Four, he says plain classic Lolita looks aren't bad if I'm just gonna only dress up like that in the house, but said sweet Lolita is off the table. Also, he says no accessories because that makes you look crazy. Five, I told him I'd eventually want to only wear Lolita, and he said that's impossible and I already have clothes. I'm not sure what to do because I really want to be a Lolita and feel girly and pretty, but he hates it, and when I watch Lolita content or look up dresses, he says I'm wasting time and could do more important things. I've struggled with depression and body image issues, and watching Lolita content lets me dream of dressing how I've always wanted and showing the real me. But now I feel like it's never going to happen. You don't have to talk about my story. I just needed to vent and didn't have anyone else to turn to. Thanks for letting me put words out into the void. Well, Cotton Ball, let me see if I've got this right. You are a married woman. You are a stay-at-home mom. You really want to wear Lolita and your husband is being a dick about it. He is absolutely disrespecting your interest in a perfectly fine and harmless hobby on all fronts, and I'm gonna reel it in because when you've married someone, I feel like you've made a commitment 
and I'm sure you definitely want to work on this, so I'm not going to bite his head off and spit it into a ditch, even though I really, really, really want to, because he's being a prick. Let's summarize what he said about Lolita so far. When you tried to wear something that was Lolita adjacent, he said it looked like a costume. When you showed him pictures of Lolita, he says people who dress like that are sick in the head. He has told you that sweet Lolita is off the table, as if you're a dog and he can tell you what to do. He apparently thinks accessories make you look crazy, and he even hates it when you watch Lolita content and says you're wasting your time and could be doing more important things. Separate but related, when you've asked him if you look good in non-Lolita outfits when you're running your outfits by him, he has been known to be passé or say no. Which would maybe make sense if you walked out in a chicken suit with burnt orange galoshes and a kick-me sign stapled to your forehead, but for any other outfit, a do I look good being met with a blatant no, especially from someone you have married, is not okay. Also, the whole no sweet Lolita and accessories are off the table thing really shows how entitled he is to decreeing what you can and can't wear. And I feel like your reaching out into the void is a real sign that you guys need to sit down and have a conversation. Because let me tell you, no part of this message is okay. No part of this message indicates a healthy relationship. And no part of this message is telling me that he's respecting you as the equal partner in this marriage that you are. The way you've written this really makes me feel like there's a disparity between you two when it comes to power and who is in charge. I really get the feeling that he has positioned himself over you and considers himself to be in a position where he can dictate what you like, what you spend your time on, and what you do. No part of that is how a healthy marriage works. And I may not be married myself, but as someone who's been in a relationship for 10 years or a decade with a man that I would trust with my feelings, with my future, and with my life, I absolutely cannot read this without feeling like you deserve better. And before you jump to conclusions, I'm not saying that you should just get a divorce and bounce, okay? I know that marriage is a serious institution, you have entered into a union with this man, and you've pledged your lives to each other. And as you said, you're a stay-at-home mom. And with that comes a lot of concerns for stability and childcare and making sure your kid doesn't starve on the fracking streets a la Oliver Twist, alright? So even though I want to yeet him in the head with a pineapple, what I am saying when I say that you deserve better is that you're going to also need to advocate for better. Especially when it comes to marriage, which is supposed to be a union between two equals, at least ideally. It really does seem like he's treating you like some kind of subclass in your own house. As if you're not an adult, as if you're not a fully grown woman who has had a child. You made a human being and delivered it unto the world and he's treating you as if you're some fracking infant that he can order around. Has he ever made a person? Heck, I don't even like children, but I still respect the physical toll and mental toll one has to go through to make one. You made a person in your body with just your body. That's fracking bananas. So, while I am not advocating for divorce, though I still want to yeet him into a ditch, I am saying that you need to advocate for yourself. You need to sit this man down, and I need you to tell him, politely but firmly, that you are an adult. You are an adult with your own interests, and when you tell him about those interests, you are not asking for his approval. I need you to go in with confidence, I need you to summon the fact that you are the mother of a child that is looking up to you as an example. And I don't know the gender of that child, but if that child is also a girl, she is going to be modeling how women are to be treated and how they are to act off of you. And I don't say this to shame you, I say this because women often have a hard time advocating for themselves, but will fight tooth and nail for others. And this is what you need to do for your son or for your daughter, because they are looking at you right now as an example of how they are to act later on in their lives and how their relationship is to work. And I want you to ask yourself this question right now, do I want my son or my daughter to be treated the way I'm being treated right now? Do I want my child to feel the way I am feeling right now? And let me tell you, if that answer is no, you need to start fighting for yourself. Because this 
is not remotely okay, and frankly, I know I said I was gonna keep the gloves on, but it pisses me the fuck off. Cameraman would never dream of treating me this way because we are equals. Whatever I'm into, as long as I'm not out slaughtering the innocent, he's on board with. Whatever he's into, so long as he's not out committing arson, I'm on board with. Why? Because we're adults who support each other and are equals within our relationship. And while there are a diverse range of factors in every single relationship between two inherently flawed human beings, I do believe mutual respect and trust is the baseline for every single healthy relationship. No exceptions, and I am not seeing that here. And also, as someone who has also struggled in the past with body image issues and continues to struggle with depression myself, the amount of psychological and emotional damage that can be done by someone who you've let into your heart and into your home, for that type of person that you've let so deep into your soul, for them to be dismissive of the few things that do bring you joy or give you comfort is incredibly damaging. And I want you to know that it is not in any way your fault that this is happening to you. No part of this is you just not being strong enough or you just need to toughen up or any of that bullshit. He absolutely should know better and should not be treating you this way. But because you have married this man, because you have had a child with this man and there are concerns and there are security issues when it comes to raising a child, especially alone, I know you want a stable home life, especially. Mothers want a safe place for their child to lay their head at night and they want that security, I understand. So again, I'm not advocating that you ditch this person, but I am advocating that you stand up for yourself, that you communicate with this person, and that you fight for the marriage that you deserve. Too many women allow themselves to be made into something so much smaller than they are. You are such a strong person. You've done something I can't imagine doing. The idea of having a baby fracking horrifies me, all right? That is my fracking nightmare, the physical and emotional toll it takes. And then raising a person. You're out there molding a person right now. You have the strength to get through the incredibly traumatic process of giving birth. So believe this when I say you have the strength to have a conversation with the man you call your husband. Given that people can be defensive when you're talking to him, do try to avoid the overuse of the word you. Generally focus on how you feel, how this made me feel when I heard this. It made me feel this way. Focus on your own emotions and how you feel, and this will hopefully keep him from getting too defensive while you have this talk, because it is likely going to be uncomfortable. Because his behavior is unacceptable and you're going to have to address it. And finally, when it comes to the fact that you're a stay-at-home mom and he's the breadwinner, you are doing a frack ton of work for free that would be incredibly expensive for a nanny to do. If you decided to just walk out the house and leave the baby in the bassinet, I think he'd soon discover that you actually do quite a bit of work around the house, including keeping said baby alive. Caring for and maintaining a child by itself is not easy, but also I'm presuming he's having you keep up the house and do laundry and shit on top of it, so you're doing quite a few jobs with zilch for pay. And considering you're married, and again, it's an equal partnership, your funds should be shared betwixt you. And given that at no point during this message did you write anything about being short on money, it does appear to me that you have more than enough for you to have a reasonable amount of participation in the fashion. It doesn't appear that money is the issue, but it does appear that you seem to think that you aren't entitled to any money at all because you are again a stay-at-home mom, which is work. Which again, doesn't make any fracking sense if you're in a partnership of equals. You are doing unpaid, valuable labor at home by taking care of a baby that he helped make. You are helping to take care of your child collectively, which is also his child who would die if you just fracking left. This is a topic that really like steams my fracking beans, because even though I don't like children and I don't want children, I recognize that taking care of a child is a lot of fracking work. And again, one more time, if this is a partnership between equals, then that money that he's making is for the household. 
He is not the sole arbiter of who gets to do what with the money, all right? If you're in a partnership of equals, you should be able to divvy out little expenditures that will make you happy. I'm presuming he doesn't ask you before he buys whatever gadget or gizmo he wants. So one more time, it all, it all comes down to having a conversation. Talk to him like the adult and equal that you are and come to terms with the fact that in this partnership, you are also entitled to a certain amount of money, all right? I'm not talking about like you take 80% of his earnings, blow it on brand, and then your rent check bounces and you're in the streets. That's not what I'm advocating, okay? I'm not looking for you to become a frilly hobo. What I am asking for you to do is just talk to the man that you fracking married, that you pledged your goddamn life to, and lay out the fact that you did so as equals. And that you want to buy some fracking frilly dresses because it makes you happy, all right? Imagine yourself down the line having not had this conversation, miserable, with no Lolita, and with a child that thinks this is how women are to be treated. Think about that. Think about that future long and hard. And then consider whether or not it might be time to talk to your husband. Who you promised till death do us part, alright? He's supposed to be stuck with you. At least make the life you have together fun before you both turn to dust. What I'm saying, Cotton Ball, is that I believe in you. I believe you can have this conversation with your husband, and I believe that you can improve your life and your child's life. And all it takes is a little bit of backbone and a tough conversation. And you know what? That's true for a lot of things in life. So I hope you'll remember that going forward. I am wishing you the best of luck, and I really, 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 really fracking hope that you take this advice, you proceed, and you let this man know that you love him, but he does not fucking own you. So thank you, Cotton Ball, for your submission. That's where we're gonna end it tonight. And while I do have many more submissions to work through, I'm gonna save them for other evenings because my brain is now, well, Cotton Balls, and I need to sleep. One more time, if you'd like to submit to I'm Telling Tyler, so long as your submission is at least Lolita adjacent, you can send your tea and or queries to I'm Telling Tyler at gmail.com. With all that said, I'd like to thank my patrons for making this series possible, and should you like to join their number, you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews for more content that I don't recommend you watch ever for any reason. Thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Also related, I totally pointed the camera in this direction so you would see the tea set that cameraman got me. I was having a really fracking rough day. It was awful. It was not a fun day. And he threw a fracking paper airplane at my head. I was not amused. He told me to unfold it. And on that piece of paper was a tea set I have been wanting for about a decade. I would wander over to Macy's every single time and just stare at it, but I couldn't buy it because it was too expensive and I didn't have the money. And in the sequence of one rough day, he tossed an entire tea set at my head. And I just wanted to show it to you because it makes me happy. I like it. I think it's pretty. It's wonderful. It's Royal Albert's New Country Roses. And every time I look at it, it just makes me happy. And I just want to brag on cameraman because that was nice. I'll catch you next time.